A major blizzard is officially underway for the Midwest and Great Lakes as we speak. In this forecast, we're breaking down exactly why the atmosphere is supercharging this system, as well as the critical timing and snowfall totals that you need to prepare for. But that's not all. This energy is already eyeing the East Coast, which could mean big snowstorms are on the horizon. We're gonna go over the entire unfolding pattern and the major implications for the Eastern states. And first things first, let's just take a look at what's already ongoing. We have heavy snowfall happening throughout North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, all of these states dealing with very heavy snowfall already. We already have thunderstorms down below for Illinois. Uh, we've had some earlier today as well, and this is going to continue to be a threat for these states underneath this system. And as we just take a look at our future radar, this is what we're going to be looking at at about 5 p.m. today on Sunday, December 28th. Heavy snowfall in eastern Minnesota, northern and western Wisconsin, a lot of Iowa and Missouri are seeing some snow showers as well. The UP of Michigan on the very western end is starting to get going, but it's not until we reach about 8 p.m. that we really start to see more and more of that heavy snowfall expanding to the area that we expect the worst of the conditions to take place. Right as this system is at its lowest pressure and at its highest intensity. We see heavy snowfall throughout portions of Wisconsin and again still the western UP of Michigan. Once we reach about 12 a.m., we start to really see things going for the entirety of that UP of Michigan. Heavy, heavy snowfall, very strong winds, and it's highly probable that we will have blizzard conditions occurring throughout a lot of these areas. And this is going to continue for a while here. Here's by 5 a.m., so as we're moving entirely overnight, we start to see the lower portions of Michigan get going, especially in the western areas of the lower peninsula of Michigan. They're dealing with that heavy snowfall as well, where their snowfall totals could pile up very high as well. We see northern Illinois, northern Indiana getting going as we're reaching those really, really low, very early morning time temperatures. And as we progress towards the later morning, this is 9 a.m., we start to see things dying down for Wisconsin and the UP of Michigan, but we're really, really ripping still for the lower peninsula of Michigan, portions of Illinois, including Chicago, by the way, and then northern Indiana as well, still. And as we go a little bit further than that, towards the afternoon, this is 4 p.m. tomorrow on Monday, December 29th, we see a lot more lake effect snowfall happening as our primary low has moved out, but there's still some very quick moving cold winds moving over top of those lakes. So we expect lake effect snowfall to continue for hours after this storm is already done. And we can see that taking place here. And even by the time we're reaching 12 a.m. Tuesday on December 30th, we still see some lake effect bands going. So you can imagine this is gonna pile up the totals even higher. That finally starts to come to an end as we reach the morning time of Tuesday the 30th here. Looking at kind of the why this is occurring, we need to talk about how much warmth and how much humidity we've dealt with underneath here because throughout Christmas and even the days following here, it's been very warm and very humid in these areas. Perfect for supercharging a storm like this where we're seeing it bomb out, lowering in pressure significantly as it's just picking up so much more energy than we typically see in the wintertime like this. We see this trough moving into that very warm and humid environment and our storm is right in here with it as it dips below into the Midwest and Great Lakes. Looking at the temperatures though, again, we see the very warm temperatures compared to normal. We're talking 10, 15, 20, 25 degrees above normal or even more in these Midwest and deeper South areas. As we continue moving through, we can see the colder, drier air slamming through there as this storm moves through. This is why we're seeing severe weather as well. Warm, cold air mixing, you know what that leads to. Let's dive into the exact temperatures just to show you how warm it is. We're dealing with 60s and even 70s uh, for some of the higher temperatures in this area. So as I progress it, that's the early morning, we can see these temperatures just underneath the system surging into the low to even mid 70s. And this is actually being infused into the storm. It's moving northward there just out ahead of the system. So this is really aiding to, again, supercharge the system. Humidity, this is the dew points. We're dealing with 60s in here, which is really what you typically see in the springtime. This is extremely humid air that's also being infused in. So once we take this into account, there's no question as to why this storm is so intense compared to typical winter storms. It's dealing with very untypical humidity and high temperatures that are allowing for it to really, really take off. Here we can see where this pressure really drops rapidly over this Great Lakes and Midwest area. This is 
or a little bit earlier today. This is as you're watching the video, we're seeing it really, really decrease in pressure over the Great Lakes as it's, again, just infused with all that humidity and energy and warmth. And it continues to drop in pressure all the way into the 970s, which is considered a very major low pressure system. So this is just going to be an absolute monster of a storm. So let's just talk about the total snowfall and what you can expect as far as amounts throughout this area, because it's going to be massive. And as we take a look at it, anywhere in the grays is dealing with a dusting upwards of an inch or two. The blues are two to six inches of snowfall. Purples are six to 10, which we're talking more so Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan for those higher amounts as we start to get very plowable. And then the pinks is where we get very intense. That's where we're mostly expecting 10 to 20 inches of snowfall throughout a lot of, again, Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, the entire UP of Michigan, and then the northern and western edge there of the lower peninsula of Michigan. We do see some pastel blues there on the northern edge of the northern upper peninsula of Michigan here, and that's where we're dealing with the two to three feet amounts as that lake effect snowfall tallies on a bunch more snowfall after the storms said and done. So we're talking in feet, not inches for this area. Now, as we transition to talking more about the east, I got to put on my nerd glasses here because we're going to get a little bit technical, but bear with me. We're going to walk through it together. We are talking about the Arctic Oscillation first things first, which is one of our key phases for indicating cold temperatures that are going to support snow systems in not only the eastern states, but really the, the United States in general. And we can see this is negative and it's staying negative for the entire European model run. This is overall considered to be favorable for cold and snowy conditions, but this isn't the only factor. We also have our NAO, which stands for North Atlantic Oscillation. This stays very negative all the way until we reach around the 10th, which is very far out, and then it spikes positive, but really, it's not going super far positive. It's staying around neutral, but for the majority of the upcoming pattern, this is in its very negative phase as well, which is considered the cold and snowy phase for this one. This one has a little bit more implications for snowstorms along the East Coast. It's a well-known thing that the NAO being negative is very favorable for East Coast snowstorms, including nor'easters, which is the exact type that we're kind of keying in on here. So this is very good that this is in its negative phase as well. But again, that's not all. We also have our PNA, which stands for Pacific North American Oscillation. And this one's a little bit different. We actually want this one to be in its positive phase for cold temperatures in the east, which does increase the chance for east coast snowstorms as well. And we can see it's in its positive phase here uh, all, from now all the way until about the 1st or 2nd of January here. And then it kind of dumps negative here from the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th for a few days there. And then it jumps back positive here around the 6th, 7th, which is a time frame we're watching for a storm signal. And then it goes even further positive around the 9th, 10th. And that is very far out, like I mentioned earlier. But we've also seen the models keying in on this area, uh, this time frame for a snow signal along the East Coast as well. So in other words, all three of these very important factors are in their favorable phase, phases for cold and snow. Almost the entire model run, the only one that's bouncing in and out of that phase, favorable phase is the PNA, which leads me to believe that the PNA is the driving factor for if we're in favorable conditions for snow or unfavorable. And as of now, it looks pretty favorable for the eastern half of the nation until about New Year's, where we again go unfavorable from about the second through the fifth. Then we start to get these storm signals where we're favorable again around the sixth, seventh, and then any time from there all the way until about the 11th, 12th, it looks to be in its favorable phase. So again, the PNA is what is going to be our key indicator for when favorable phases are setting up here. Now I could take the glasses off. Let's talk about the upcoming uh, temperatures after this that is going to support nor'easter type systems. As our AO, NAO, and PNA are all favorable, we get a really large trough here just before New Year's, which again, the PNA is favorable during this time. Watch what happens when we expect that PNA to flip negative for a little bit, though. We start to get a little bit more warm air involved for the second, third, fourth. But remember, two out of three of our of our uh, teleconnections are favorable here. The NAO and AO are staying favorable. So that is why I think we're seeing a semi-favorable cold temperature air mass, but it's not able to fully dive in because we're not at a th we're not at a three out of three favorability for cold here. We're at a two out of three, and that's where we get this warmth kind of flirting with the deep south. It's right around the 6th, 7th 
right when that PNA goes favorable again, that we get colder air reaching all the way down to the Gulf Coast and Southeast. This is an East-based trough that we're seeing as of now, but this is around the time frame that we're watching a pretty big storm signal for snowstorms in the East. And that continues as everything remains favorable to be a factor even towards the 10th, 11th, which again is probably the most favorable look on all of the models as of now. It is very far out though, so take it with a grain of salt. Confidence is still low for the specifics at this point, but they are increasing because day after day, we're seeing this continue to be a factor that the models wanna show. So we're gonna continue to monitor this. And as we move even further, we stay we kind of just cold through the end of the model run here. So we get into a very deep Arctic pattern, although it's never truly unfavorable at any point from now all the way through this point, we can kind of see where it's the most favorable. I want to talk about why these nor'easters as opposed to just the typical kind of like west to east storms are going to become a little bit more likely and that all has to do with the jet stream. I think the NAO has a big part to do with this that causes ridging out over the Atlantic Ocean which can cause the jet stream instead of just going flat off the east coast horizontally which again doesn't encourage storms to climb up the coast and cause vertical snowfall to occur. It causes these more horizontal snowstorms that impact a more horizontal area as you could imagine we've seen a lot of those so you have good references all the snowstorms that we've seen recently have been this very horizontal type which are in general less impactful than a more vertical climbing snowstorm we do look to head into a pattern that does support a more vertical climb and that starts uh really we see a favorable pattern we don't have a correct storm though is the problem around new year's because we can see this jet stream is climbing a little bit more vertically Whereas before, this is a perfect example of a horizontal look. It's moving down, but then just over off the East Coast. You're not going to get a system to climb up the East Coast in this type of a jet stream. But look what happens as we move towards a key area, the 6th, 7th. Look at how vertical this gets right here. Again, all phases are favorable, and we get this almost crazy, crazy perfect vertical climb off the East Coast with the jet stream. Once again, we can see for the 10th, 11th, a even stronger jet with a similar favorable climb up the eastern states and this is the type of pattern that would support your classic dc to boston snowstorms or even you know virginia to maine snow systems because the snow systems are climbing up the entire coast this is exactly what we've been missing for years here let's take a look here at the storms that we see on today's model run because this european model does show in the long range some nor'easter type systems one of which is, again, right around that 6th, 7th, after we get that good jet, jet stream set up, we get the 8th, 9th here. This is going to be your most favorable snow system here that we see. 995 uh, there, again, your jet stream. Perfect placement for a snow system like this. And we get heavy snowfall, kind of a semi-vertical snowstorm, which can be very, very good heavy snowstorms um, oftentimes. And especially as they move offshore, they tend to intensify and we see that occurring here, heavy snowfall, essentially from West Virginia, Virginia, all the way through Maryland, DC, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, and into Southern New England. This would be a pretty heavy hitter in this instance. And we're left with very cold air after that is said and done. And then it looks like we are kind of primed. We don't have that vertical climb in this instance, but maybe a Southern slider pattern as everything's very low with the cold air, but very horizontal, which allows us to tap into some Southern moisture that we typically don't get with the Northern Stream, except for severe examples like we see here. So be aware of that. Although again, it's very far out, very, very far out. The total snowfall for this type of system, talking about the semi-vertical system we just saw in the European model would be, again, snowfall for a lot of these areas in here. Very similar to the jet stream trajectory with a semi-vertical look. This instance, which the amounts don't matter too much, but it would be a pretty heavy hitter, plowable snowfall straight from West Virginia, Virginia, DC, Maryland, uh, straight into Northern Delaware, New Jersey, even Philadelphia there, New York City, Southern New England, straight to Boston. This is a classic snowstorm area uh, to see these types of systems. And a lot of times people are waiting for big hits like this across the big mid-Atlantic and uh, Northeast cities like this. And we do get one on this European model, just very, very far out. If we get a pattern that supports stuff like this, we could get even bigger snowstorms than this, but for similar areas. And that's what I'm warning you guys about because we have the ingredients and it's looking more and more favorable by the day. There's still a long way to go, but we're watching. We're watching very, very closely. 
Now, as we take a look at the entire model run, we're going to see a couple of other systems that I missed, not the very major ones, but some of the more minor to moderate ones that aren't as noteworthy. As we can see, as we move through, we get our big blizzard. That moves through. Cold front comes through, and we get a ridge in the e uh, west, trough in the east here, some lake effect snowfall going. Almost immediately, we get another clipper system, which we've seen a lot of so far this winter. This is for Tuesday the 30th, just a couple of days from now, and that moves through the Great Lakes. And it does impact the mid-Atlantic and northeast a little bit. Almost immediately for Wednesday the 31st, we have another minor clipper rolling through the Midwest. And this one also looks to impact the Ohio Valley and perhaps the mid-Atlantic and northeast there. We see areas in, in more southern Indiana, southern Ohio, into West Virginia getting some of that snowfall. And then we get that, again, negative PNA that becomes a little bit less favorable. That's when things get a little bit iffy. We do get a system right here, which is interesting, that would be in prime position to climb up the coast if the jet stream was supportive of it, but it's not quite as supportive yet. We do see a more horizontal system roll through the Midwest, Great Lakes, and Northeast there around the 5th, 6th, right before that jet stream gets super favorable. What's interesting here is that if we didn't have this super strong low right here, and this was actually the primary low, we've seen this so many times, this could climb up and actually be a massive system right here for the 6th, Tuesday the 6th. That is a potential outcome at this point. But for now, we get a more interior snowfall event that's a little bit more minor, and that offshore low does not really take over like it potentially could on this model run. Uh, we do see that move up and eventually take over and impact the northeast, but this could impact a lot more areas from south to north uh, if it takes over a little bit earlier. Then by the time we cross over the 7th into the 8th, that's when everything swings around and we get a little bit more southern energy infused earlier on. We get this kind of vertical climbing jet stream, pretty classic setup. And then we get heavy snowfall for Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, Maryland, DC, Pennsylvania for Friday the 9th here, very early. And that lasts through the day on the 9th here for Eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Southern New England, Southern New York. There is a very strong offshore storm, by the way, 986 prime position. I cannot emphasize that enough. This is exceptionally prime position. And then we get very cold temperatures after that on this model for the 10th, 11th, 12th. Although that's when we start to move into very far out territory. So we're watching for it. It's not a super high confident thing yet, at least for the specific details. But again, the pattern based on everything does look very favorable. It points that way. So we have a little bit more confidence than we typically would in a long range cold look just because all the pieces are at play. So it makes sense, not just from a model standpoint, but just logically everything happening around the globe. It all makes sense. Now diving into the total precipitation here, we do see high amounts along the West coast, but the West as a whole is slowing down a little bit. We do see lots of activity for this Eastern area as we see really everything pointing this way. Uh, that is going to be the trend is a lot of our activity more so focusing on the east as opposed to the west and central states over time. Total snowfall in the whole model run uh, would be, ex you know, acceptable out west, I think. And then for the northern plains, Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, I don't think for snow lovers, at least, there would be any complainers here with this. This is an exceptionally snowy pattern that we see through this whole model run uh, looking forward. So we're going to continue to keep you guys up to date with all of this stuff. So be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.